So good morning everybody, Brooklyn Aboy. Welcome everybody. I I made another video that was kind of a hakdama, an introduction to this video. And I wanted to talk about superstition in Judaism and superstitious practices that are prohibited and the parameters of those things because I think it's an important subject for a totally different reason than you might imagine. So The general term of, of superstition in Judaism is called Darke Amori, even though there are other terms, but the main thing that are is halachically prohibited, meaning in Jewish law, there's a prohibit, prohibition of the ways of the Amorites. That generally means things that are superstitious or pagan in origin, yet are not directly idolatrous. And that so that the prohibition on these practices is a lesser prohibition than the prohibition on idolatry. But nonetheless, it is it is a prohibition. And we have to know the the parameters of this prohibition. And one major part of this prohibition is that there are times when the prohibition is not there. And it's interesting because I was looking for something to be a background and I found this from Rebbe Nachman, Nikosi Mulenu, putting down the whole idea of Darke Amori. And the reason I'm bringing this up again, if you didn't see the last video, which I encourage you to watch before this video, is that or listen to, or whatever it is, is that I was making a point in an argument on Twitter that most of what we consider to be Hasidic is pre-Hasidic. And the person who was arguing with me said, well, most of that pre-Hasidic stuff is prohibited anyway because it's superstitious. And we kind of grew out of that stuff. You know, and, and we never were supposed to have it to begin with. I, I, I wanted to answer back, you know, we were talking about Talmud Chachamim Gedolim, who were talking about these issues, and they, I'm not saying that just because they're a Gadol, just because they're a Talmud Chacham, that there's some magic quality to what they say, but rather, they know the sources, they know there's an Isser in Dark Amori. So they know what is Dark Amori and what is not Dark Amori. What is the ways of the Amorites and not the ways of the Amorites. That's prohibited scripturally. But also, there's another point, and that is that our sages teach us, and there's a general rule in Jewish law, Dark Amori Mutter L'Refua. The ways of the Amorites are, per so superstitious practices are permitted if for healing purposes. That is, that's the law. Now there's a whole discussion about that type of stuff, whether or not it's proper and so forth. And here it's interesting because here's something that's clearly Hasidic, is Rebbe Nachman. You can't get much more Hasidic than Rev Nachman. Right? Like real Baal Shem Tov Hasidus, that's Rebbe Nachman. And he is talking against superstition and saying that you cannot be a leader if you embrace even the slightest bit of superstition. You cannot be a Jewish leader. I would pass this guy if it wasn't raining. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Pocket by eight, but I don't think it's going to happen. No. Anyway, so so uh, again, but a lot of these like superstitious type things are what we consider to be Hasidic today, right? Like that's what when when most people consider you know like these spooky Kabbalistic type stuff. Rabbi Nachman was against all of that, right? And. Yet you see people who, you know, certainly even within 
people identify with his community who embrace it not and this and that and I don't want to get into all those politics right now what I want to get into is something different and that is that something totally different and this is really coming from my background my bachelor's degree was in psychology from Toro College which is now Toro University it wasn't Toro University when I went you know 20 years ago and basically you know, this, this is a, basically what I want to bring out is that refua, healing, right? We're always being told, right? That uh, mental illness is illness, just like any other illness, right? And there shouldn't be a stigma on mental illness, and it should be looked at like any other illness. And Darke Amori Mutra Rafua means that for our mental health and mental healing, uh, there are certain things that might be Darke Amori. But halakhically we're allowed to do it, doesn't mean we're commanded to do it, doesn't even maybe mean we should do it. I don't know. But we are permitted in Jewish law to engage in these types of things. And so therefore, I, I'm positing that dark hair, and this is my chiddush, this, this is Joe Kolakowski. And I don't have any makor for this, and, and maybe someone else knows a makor. It could be, you know, I, in my own family's, you know, writings, it could, you know, I, I'm not a bucky in the writings of the Chabas Yoyer, you know. Maybe he said something about this. Maybe so. I, I should really look up, and especially in Mark Shisha, and that's the type of thing probably he would talk about there, uh, or in other svarim. And like I wish so many more of his svarim were released because he, he was so brilliant and so worldly, and and you know covered a lot of these types of discussions uh, in in the, in the Yornosiv and other svarim that were never published. But anyway. Point I want to bring out is that, you know, like one of the things that, that the post can bring down, right, is that you, you, uh, is, is Kaporis and Tashlich, that these could be considered to be dark Amori, and that one should not engage in these types of things, and it's a bit, and, and yet, Art Sadikim all pretty much do Kaporis, and, and really there would be no Nafkamina, there'd be no difference between Kaporis with money or with a chicken. As far as it's dark amori, it's dark amori. You know, swinging the money over your head is also, uh, you know, like a dark amori type thing. But nonetheless, the point that that I'm bringing out here is that. Dark Amori is mutual refua, and I would say that includes mental health. Like if you feel a certain way, you know, after you shlug kaporis or go do tashlich, and it and it helps your mental health. Um, that should be enough to to counteract the poskim who say that it's aser mishum dark Amori because dark Amori mutual refua. It should be enough to say for those legal authorities in Jewish law uh, who say that it's prohibited to do kaporis, to swing a chicken over your head and then give the chicken to, to charity uh, because it's a superstitious Amorite practice. And when we say dark Amori doesn't specifically have to be the practices that the Amorites did, but really the way that the post can understand it is any type of superstitious thing 
is permitted because of dark hair mori. Again, doesn't mean you should do it. Probably for a lot of these superstitious things, you probably should not engage in them. The lucky rabbit's foot and being worried about today happens to be Friday the 13th on the civil calendar, um, which is really a Christian calendar. Um, and really, if you want to get to it, it's the Catholic calendar, right? Um, which is still Christian, but a particular type of Christian is what I'm saying. And, and not really a secular calendar, except that uh, in the term of seclorum, you know, we'll get into it. We, we don't have to get into that. But there are aspects of these questions of faith of, of uh, uh, sorry I'm getting these, these aspects of superstition and I think you know to me the ones that we have more of a license to practice are those that we see that our study can practice like like I said Kaparas and Tashlich you know you know saying certain prayers uh, with, and, and also to recognize the purpose of these things and, the, and all of the things that are surrounding them and the, and the psychological benefits of these practices as opposed to, you know, we, don't, we shouldn't see them necessarily as a mitzvah except for maybe mitzvah l'shmoel, l'brei chachomim. But nonetheless, uh, and, and also not a minhag, uh, but, the, but the psychological power of these things and the connection between the psyche and the spirit that there is a, an interface between mind body and soul right which should, should go probably either soul mind body or body mind soul the mind is the interface between the body and the soul and so to participate in these things in a psychological realm uh, especially learning Jungian psychology it demystifies you know one of my friends who actually like kind of made me a chassid now has a podcast demystifying Judaism and, and he's become I guess somewhat of a misnagid probably but nonetheless I, I want to demystify that and say that there is a rationalism <coughs> within our mystical traditions and that recognize mental illness as a real illness and that these superstitious practices are perhaps a means of treating that mental illness just like superstitious practices are allowed within halacha to treat physical illness I, I would I would venture to say that it's the permission extends to mental illness and also even preventative mental health care and that recognition that we are all broken that we are all on some kind of a spectrum and that we need this type of self-care and this type of religious self-care even if it's not necessarily within the realm of halacha or how today's the Rambam's yurt site. It's ironic that the Rambam's yurt site should fall on Friday the 13th that the great rationalist that his yurt site this year is falling on a day of superstition. And I think there's some kind of message there. But nonetheless, that is the message that I want to bring out here is that what, if we're going to say dark amori mutterlerafua then that means uh, my kiddush is that that includes uh, and I, I, I maybe want to do some more research on this maybe write 
some kind of a thesis on this, try to get uh, maybe a PhD by by publication from some British university or something, if I can if I can do something like this. Uh, but that the dark amori mutula refua the parameters of that and how that relates to our day-to-day -day life and the recognition of that, but also looking at this from Rebbe Nachman, recognizing that all this stuff is not real. Meaning Rebbe Nachman said you cannot put any amuna in dark amuna and be a manik. You can't be a leader if you really believe in superstitions, even if you have tremendous faith in God, but also have a little bit of a faith in superstition. You cannot be a leader. But if you recognize that the dark Hemar is really nothing, and it's only a psychological tool, and it has no uh, has it has no different quality than than taking a, a Tylenol, an aspirin. So you treat a headache with a Tylenol or an aspirin, and you treat you treat certain types of mental illness with other medicines and other things, but also perhaps with superstitious practices. But recognize them not in a superstitious way, but in a psychological way. I think that could possibly be. Again, this is my chiddush, and I wish I had time to really develop a real. Maybe someone else will take take the reins on this and, and get their PhD on it. Um, it'll be their chiddush and not mine. But that this is the idea of Darke Mori Mutul Rafua, that superstitious practices are permitted for healing. This is the healing we're talking about, is, is psychological healing, mental health, I think we, we I think we got something here. I don't know. You tell me in the comments below if you agree with me. Especially if there are people who watch this that are more, you know, I I mean I have people who I'm close with who um, understand these things better than me, and it's something I really want to discuss with. with some of my psychologist friends and uh, most of this idea I really learned mostly from from Rabbi Ariel Bartzado which again almost all of my Rebbeim tell me stay away from him but I'm not going to stay away from him I consider him to be one of my Rebbeim too even though I only ever met him once I've only spoken on the phone three or four times but his emphasis on on Carl Jung, I think really taught me a lot. So, I don't know. Tell me some of this in the comments below what you all think. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. Doesn't look like I'm. Ah, come on. Doesn't look like I'm going to make it before 8 o'clock to work. So, I'll just have to stay a little longer than I thought, which I planned on anyway. All right. Well, God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. We'll see you all later. Have a good day.